It's great seeing everybody. Glad you're here. Um, you know, we're really excited for our fans and just the atmosphere ha out here at Berea is just fantastic. So we're grateful for all our fans here. We're excited to see our players and coaches on the field and feel like we're off to a great start. Yeah, I'd just echo what Dee said. We've been obviously blessed with great weather and the turnout, both in terms of numbers and just the enthusiasm the fans have shown makes it uh, a lot of fun, more fun, I'll say, for the players as they grind through these workouts. Do you feel after seven years that hey, you, you, you finally got what you uh, started off to try to build? I think John and Freddie have done a good job of talking about expectations and um, clearly we've put together, it looks like we put together a good team, but I think right now everybody's just focused on getting better today. So we'll try to get better Sunday, we'll try to get better Monday, Tuesday's an off day, and we'll try to get better again Wednesday. Do you guys cringe when you hear the Super Bowl talk, or do you welcome it? I mean, Freddie and the players are saying they're not afraid to talk about it. I think, have that cool. I think the expectation is to win. I think that's everybody's expectation. At the same time, I think you got to realize it's six weeks till the first game. Yeah. I mean, it is a, this is a long season, a long grind. And like I said, we still have a very young team. We've integrated some new players. They've got to be assimilated into a team. So we've got a lot of work to do. You guys have really come so. a long way in a short amount of time. I think it's like 18 to 20 months since John took over. You've gone from a team that struggled to win a game to being considered a, a contender this year. Well, you know, John has a track record of putting together good teams, but as John would quickly say, we haven't done anything yeah. yet, so we've got to prove it on the field. I know the trade for OBJ was a while ago, but has it still sunk in like the Giants really did that? You all have them, and especially when you're looking at the injuries and things across the league, that you guys have a generational talent on your team of this caliber? I think it has now that he's here, Josie. He's here and he's part of our team and he's practicing every day and his family's here and so we've had lots of chances to interact with him. So yeah, I think it's sunk in and we're obviously excited to have another really good player on our team. Jimmy, every year of uh, your ownership around draft time, you talk about we've got to find a quarterback, find a quarterback. So in your mind, is that search over? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we have not only a really good quarterback, he's also a really good leader who loves football. So. We were fortunate to have the first pick that year, and John and his team made a great pick in Baker, and obviously he's going to be part of our franchise for a long time to come. Do you look at what other quarterbacks have done in year two? I think of Mahomes and Wentz recently and think this guy can be an MVP candidate this soon? You know, that's all. That's I, Here again, I think Baker's working hard to get better every day, and like I said, he's going to be our quarterback for a long time. We're delighted to have him as our quarterback, and you know, he's, if you look at his track record, he's won everywhere he's been. Jimmy, what are realistic expectations for the team? You know, Terry, I think that's probably a better question for uh, Freddie and John, to be honest. Um, like I said, I think right now we still have six weeks before the first game, and the guys are just working hard every day to try to get better, and I think that's what we need to try to do. What has OBJ done for your brand, for your national profile, for the attention on the team? You know, I mean, uh, there, there's just, I think there's just a lot of excitement around all our team. I don't, I mean, I think he's been, obviously, um, he he's brought a lot of excitement here. The fans are really excited about him, and it's a national exposure. But I think, I think in general, our fans are really excited about the whole team. Next year, you guys are going to unveil the new uniforms. I won't bother asking you what they look like because I know what you, I know you won't tell me, but just, uh, you know, just how excited are you to have the opportunity to get another chance to maybe rebrand the, the, the franchise again and also hit, hit yeah, it on yeah, the Yeah, I mean, we talk all, all the time about kind of Cleveland has a certain way about, it, about them. And I think the uniform that we're in development um, will fit our team really well, just our look and our feel of who we are. You going to change the helmet? No, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely never. Dee, is there anything that needs to be done uh, from now until April? Uh, you know, I think no. I think there's still some things to be done. It takes it takes a little while. Obviously, it's it, you have to really work hard to get every detail right. But I, I I still think they're working on the development part of it. But it's coming together. You guys really wanted to wear the color rush this year. I know you applied to the league to get special permission to wear that. Where does that stand? Well, we're real excited. Hopefully, um, you know that will work out. So.
but it's it's a pretty good uniform. I think the players would be excited to wear it if it works so, out. So still waiting to hear a mm -hmm. yes or no. Mm -hmm. Jim, Jimmy, is there a sense of relief at all just when you look out on the field and you see how the talent level has been upgraded? Yeah, it's fun. And uh, Dee and I were talking about this last night, Terry. Yeah. Listen, we're excited for the organization, uh, the players, the coaches, the personnel, everybody. We're excited for ourselves, everybody that puts in all the time and hard work. But we're most excited. You all know the area as well or better than what we do. Most excited for the fans. I mean, because they these are the greatest sports fans I've ever been around, and they deserve to have a really good football team. Can you even quantify how different you guys feel personally from the other training camps where there weren't the expectations and probably weren't the same excitement as there is this year? Kind of cuts both ways, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd much rather be in this position, right? So. Has, has your ownership style changed at all in the last eight months to a year? You know, I, I think we've I'll, I, I think we've said this a lot. I think we've learned a lot as we've gone along. It's been painful, but I think we have really good people in our organization that we feel really comfortable with. It what was seems, the most important it seems thing you've learned then? Get the right people in the right place and to get a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. It seems as if you all have taken a step back. Publicly, it looks that way. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I'll just say we, we felt really good about the people we have in place. What are your thoughts about just Freddie Kitchen's style? He so laid back, uh, at least you know, from my perception and chill, really seems to be you know, the perfect personality to mesh these stars together. But in your own words, you know, just you know, his manner of dealing with the players, the level of players that you guys have on this team. Yeah, I would say two things. Is if you were uh, close on the field, um, you would not think he was laid back. If you uh, would have yeah, heard right. him today, he's not laid back. Um, I, I think Freddie has a, a lot of strengths, but he is very comfortable in who Freddie Kitchens is. And we've all been around people who are, quote, comfortable in their own skin. That is a tremendous strength with his, and it shows through to everybody he deals with, I would, I would suppose, from you all to the players. And I think that's what will make him a really good head coach. Why do you think it, it took so long for him to get an opportunity to be a head coach? And when you were going through that process, what did you like about him and thought he'd be a good one? Um, I, I, you know, there's a lot of luck in life, right? right? Right person, right place. And so sometimes people are exposed early. and. Sometimes you're an offense quarter and you have a great quarterback and that gets you a job. So I think there's right, right time, right place. But just what I just said, I mean, he's very comfortable with who Freddie Kitchens is. He doesn't try to be something he's not. And we think he'll relate well to all kinds of different people, but most importantly, our player. I mean, but Freddie can talk to the guys that cut the grass. He can cut, talk to the scouts. He can talk to the players. He can talk to D&I. He's very comfortable. And like I said, I'm repeating myself, he doesn't try to be something he's not. How, how do you guys feel Kareem Hunt is coming along? What is your involvement with him on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis? And I know there was just a little minor red flag recently. Did that worry you in any way, and how are things going? Well, I mean, we know that Kareem has work to do, and he's in counseling working really hard, and um, it's, it's up to him. It, it truly is up to him, and we, um, you know, that we have expe that's the expectations and we have high expectations for our players. As a woman, Dee, did you have any qualms about uh, signing him? Well, I mean, I, I think you have to take the situation very, very, very seriously. And we spent a lot of time, and John spent a lot of time with Kareem and uh, felt like um, he has potential as a person, which is obviously as important as a player. So uh, he needs to continue to work really hard uh, to be part of our organization. And Kareem guys. understands what he has to do to continue to be part of Cleveland Browns. Sorry, Jim. I know we talked to you guys in March about um, trying to work with the league and the NFLPA to get approval for him to be able to stay with the Browns during his suspension. Yeah, those and talks are still ongoing. Okay. Obviously, the league has the final call, but those talks are still ongoing. Jimmy, a, a lot of what's happened in the last 12 months to get the Browns to this point has happened organically. It wasn't planned. Was here a year ago. Uh, Tyrod Taylor was supposed to play and win, uh, and, and who knew Freddie Kitchens would end up being the head coach? So, I mean, what does that tell you about this business? That it seems like a lot of that stuff was accidental, almost. Well, I, I think there's. Listen, there's. I think if you look at any organization, I'll relate back to the organization I spent most of my life with, Pilot Flying J. My dad and I were laughing about this the other day. There are good decisions that are made. There's some bad ones. 
and there's luck, okay? <laughs> and I just leave it at that. And I, I think you could point to almost any, I mean, Tom Brady gets picked in the sixth round. So, you know, there's luck involved too. So, absolutely. You're in the process of extending your lease here for this facility in Berea to 2039. Mm -hmm. If you could just touch on that, uh, the thinking behind it, and then also maybe what your vision for this complex might be looking into the future. Yeah, we're, I think it's very, very public. Dave Jenkins said it, that we're committed to this facility and to Berea. They have been great partners to work with and we're continuing to look to do two things with this building make it a, and this facility, make it better for our players and better for our fans. And, you know, the turnouts we've had have been very impressive. You sense uh, some other things dovetailing with the, the excitement here. you got the draft coming up in a couple of years. You know, what's that going to do for the franchise and, and the city? Yeah, I think it's more the draft is really more about the city, and it's, it's great. For, I mean, you all know and appreciate the sports fans in this area, and you also know what a big deal the draft is. Um, so we're very excited uh, for the city of Cleveland, really in all of Northeast Ohio, because this is an event you can drive to. You, you know, you can drive four or five hours, and there's lots of pro football fans. I forget how many franchises are within three or 400 miles are here. So we think we'll have a great turnout, and we think it'll be great for the fans in Northeastern Ohio. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to showcase Cleveland, what a great place it is, and all of Northeast Ohio. So we're really, really excited about the draft. For years, you guys have wanted to develop the area around the stadium yeah. and figure some way of connecting that to downtown for the fans and that. Can you maybe give us an update where you guys are in that process? and? You know, have you even been able to, to move forward with some ideas? Well, we're, we're working on it, and, and there's been some progress made, but it's not, there's a lot of people involved in the process. We're primarily focused on the south, getting, making that connection to the stadium because the parking is in downtown and you want to be able to access the waterfront and access our stadium. So we're putting a lot of focus on that. So I, I think we're making progress. It's not fast. Um, but we're doing it as fast as we can, so we're excited about it. We'll just have to keep working at it. One of the issues fans seem to have is, you know, they're coming over from the Muni lot and Can't the tailgate lots and, and all those type of things. Um, I'm curious, though, the bottlenecks at the gates. You guys a couple of years ago worked on that. Is, are you looking at maybe taking a different approach? We're, we're doing everything we can by expanding the gates so it's a, so we have a bigger footprint there. But the, it's critical that our fans get there early this year. Um, you know, it, we, we're sold out. We're going to have a lot of people. Um, so if we can get the fans there earlier, it's great for our, for our players to see the fans there in the stadium early and just um, getting into the stadium is going to be much easier if they come early. So we would really appreciate it. It's really it. important the fans come early for their convenience, and it helps. We need 68,000 people there at 1 o'clock, not at 1.20. So. Jimmy, I was thinking, like, eight games in the last season, you know, you're, you're up there, you're changing coaches and all this stuff, and it was a pretty grim day. To go from that to here that quickly, Lord, I just wonder when you kind of, and D, too, when you go back from there to here, just and what runs through your mind? Well, I think somebody mentioned earlier, I mean, things do tend to, let's face it, we've had some bumps in the road. Yeah. You have some bad breaks, and hopefully now we're getting some good breaks. And, you know, it all starts at the quarterback position, and we look like we have a quarterback who's going to play for us for a long time. And like I said, he's not only a good quarterback, but he's a really good leader. Would anything but the playoffs be a disappointment this year? Yeah, I, I, don't, I think that's unfair. I think that Freddie and John need to comment on that. Like I said, we just need to have a good practice tomorrow and see what happens. We still got a lot of work to do, as you all can see. You were just talking about Baker. Uh, why do you think he is connected with the fans here? The he just, out? you know, when we went to see Baker in Norman, um, we did the same thing with all four quarterbacks we went to see, and all four of them are really good, good people. We went to dinner with Baker, and he's talking to seven or eight of us, and I just we watched how he handled that conversation, watched how he handled kind of the chalk talk. And then what really struck is most of the guys had three or four guys to throw to. Baker had like eight, okay, and they were all excited. And he walked in, and you would have thought, you know, their hero, which probably was true, walked in. I mean, they were all excited, all jacked up, and you could just see. We know people at Oklahoma who talked about, you know, how well he commit, uh, connected with people and 
what a good leader he was, et cetera. So, I mean, you all pick it. You all dealt with all kinds of athletes. You all can pick up, you know, who has that ability to connect with people, and he's very gifted that way. You obviously trust John Dorsey's evaluation, and he picks the guy number one overall. You expect him to be good, but was any part of you surprised he was as good as he was last year as a rookie as soon as he was? You know, Baker was – it's hard to come in in the NFL and play quarterback. It's hard to play quarterback in the NFL, period, right? And, of course, Baker took no first-team snaps, right? Tyrod took all the snaps. But you could start to see in practice as we worked our way through the exhibition games and even in the early games before he started playing that, you know, he was playing on the second team, helping get the first team ready. You could start to see him really start to come on. And, of course, none of us will forget when he comes in against the Jets and hits that 20-yard pass over the middle to Jarvis and we're off, right? Do you think the team will sort of take on a little bit of his personality, you know, kind of that moxie or whatever he has? I hope so. I mean, I hope so. I mean, I think he has that. But you all been around. There's We have a lot of different personalities on yeah. team. We have black guys, <laughs> brash guys, you know, hot-headed and a lot not so hot-headed. So, uh, But, yeah, listen, I, I heard Joel Batonio talking about Baker, and Joel's one of our best players and best leaders. He's been around here. You want your quarterback to be a strong leader. Hey, um, that plan at quarterback last year was – well-intentioned, made a lot right. of sense. Has anyone since said, like, what, what were you thinking? Well, yeah, but it doesn't do any good, and hopefully we're not going to be in that position for a long time, right? Yeah, I mean, you could have saved a third-round draft pick and and uh, started Baker day one, but hindsight's always twenty twenty, so not going to worry about that it. That was a unanimous consensus. Yeah, I mean, John makes, those, John makes those calls, and John had followed a similar track at – Kansas City when he went there when he traded for Alex Smith. So I think we all thought it made sense and just Tyrod's a great guy and a great person. Didn't work out. We wish him well and like I said, we've got the quarterback of the future for us. The couple Baker, more. Uh, the comment Baker made at the, uh, the combine last year about you know, draft me, I'm going to turn around Cleveland Brown. You know, the pieces are there. I just need a quarterback. Was that something that caught your attention and did you sense his confidence going into the draft or, or immediately after drafting him? That didn't, I, don't, I don't even remember if we saw that, but like I said, when we spent time personally with him, and all four of the, of the young quarterbacks were all good people and very confident, but you could tell Baker had something special about how it was put together. His mom and dad did a great job. What are you most proud of as you stand here today? You know, I, I think the, the fans' excitement for the team, I think that just that, you know, we can't help but be excited for them. I mean, it's a big deal. So I think for us it's – you know, just for Cleveland and the excitement of the fans, it's 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 tremendous. Yeah, I would say this: the people in this building, and that's the whole. We got everybody together, and this was actually Freddie and John and JW's idea. We got everybody together on was it Wednesday morning, mm -hmm. uh, except the players. So everybody that works for the organization, no matter what you did, and had just a little update. We started with the business side, and JW did a Q and A with John and Freddie, and D and I closed it up, and we gave out service awards. You know, it's just. And you just you appreciate how many people have worked here so long and are really good people and really care about their job and care about the Cleveland Browns and the great job they do for the organization. That's what I know why I'm proud of seven I think D is. And when you combine that with a great fan support, it's it's a good place to be. Now we've got to win some games. That's what it all counts. That's that's all we care about. You mentioned right. Freddie's personality on the field and he's not laid back. Did that surprise you at all that he's out there? Um, you, you never know how somebody's going to be when they're the head person, okay? But Freddie was the, you know, offensive coordinator, and we saw him run the offensive side of practice. So, you know, when you're the running backs coach, you're in a different role than when you're the coordinator versus the head coach. So we'd seen a little bit of it, but you never know about anybody until you put them in the job. And, you know, he's off to a really good, hit, really good start, and think he'll be our head coach for a long time. What was a single moment for each of you where you guys realized that this is different? Was it last season, this season, but this is different? What was that moment for you guys? Well, I'll just say what I said. We, we only won seven games last year, yeah. okay? And obviously a lot better than the prior two. We understand that. Um, and it looks like we put together a really good team. But we've got to go out and win games and win consistently. And we, if you look at our schedule, it's a tough schedule. And our division is tough. Everybody knows that. And, you know, our track record against particularly Pittsburgh and Baltimore and even Cincinnati is not very good. So enough talk. We've got to go out and win games now.